With a new, exciting, positive outlook on life, Jennifer was murdered with her whole life ahead of her. Today we take a look at the murder of Jennifer Kaif. Welcome back to the channel. If you like true crime cases, solved or unsolved, please subscribe. I'm going to be posting videos weekly, possibly every Thursday, and I hope to see you there. Now today we have a heavy case, and there's also a good few names to keep track of. So sit back, grab some popcorn, maybe a little drink, and enjoy the show. Today's story comes out of Austin, Texas. It starts with a young lady who goes by the name of Jennifer Kaif. She's 22 years old. Her friends and family said Jennifer, she struggled with drugs and dropped out of college because of this. However, Jennifer's life was looking up and she found a job as a legal assistant in a law firm and she was excited for a fresh start. After starting a new job, her boss promoted her to a full time after just four hours of work. It seemed that things, they were now looking up for Jennifer. On the 16th of August, Jennifer was meeting her friend Colton Pityoniak. It was to celebrate her new job, she got with the new law firm. Jennifer made friends with Colt when he moved to Austin, Texas for college. He went to the University of Texas. He was fond of the party life, as was Jennifer. Colton found Jennifer to go out to celebrate. She first wanted to stay in to get a good night's sleep as her first full day of work was the next day. But Colton, he had persuaded her otherwise. So they ended up going out to celebrate. They went to 6th Street, which is the party scene in Austin. They both met up with Jennifer's friends at a bar and had been asked if they want to go across the street to another bar, which was called Cheers Shop Bar. They agreed to go along. So they all left the bar to go ahead and go over to the next bar. Jennifer and Colton, they were a little bit behind the group as they stayed behind the previous bar to pay the bill. Everyone left the first bar at about 12am. Jennifer's friends said she saw them both at the second bar about to come in, but then they just walked away. Fast forward to the next morning, which was the 17th. Jennifer was supposed to start her new job but never showed up. One of her new colleagues got in touch with Jennifer's mom, Sharon, to ask if she knew where she was. Sharon then puzzled to ring her daughter Jennifer with no reply. She then got in touch with the cell company to try and get a list of numbers made to and from Jennifer's phone, one of which was Michael Rodriguez. He was Jennifer's friend. Sharon then rang him immediately. He said they had called Jennifer on the night of the 16th at around 12.30pm. Jennifer told him she was spending time with Colton and that he was having some issues. He followed up with two more calls at midnight and one at 5am. Michael sent her two messages that night and he responded. He followed up with two more calls at midnight and one at 5am. Jennifer told Michael that Colton was upset. The call at one at 5am, Jennifer was walking towards a car with Colton. She said he lost his phone and she was going to try to help him find it. This was the last time Michael spoke to her that night. Based on this information from Michael, Jennifer's mother Sharon, she rang Colton. She rang him twice but he insisted he had no information. He was rude on the phone. This was a big red flag. If she was your friend, you're going to help her whatever way you can. No matter what the situation. Sharon then said to Colton on the second phone call, she reported her daughter missing and that the cops were on their way to check out his apartment. Sharon, Jennifer's mother, she must have felt that Colton, he definitely had something to do with it by his mannerisms on the phone and obviously his unwillingness to help. The next day, which was the 18th, Sharon still had, she had heard nothing from her daughter. So she got in her car and she travelled up from Corpus up to Austin. As she was travelling to Austin, the police rang her and they said they had found Jennifer's car at Colton's apartment complex. So Sharon obviously went straight to the apartment complex. She went there with Jim, who was her boyfriend, and Vanessa, who was Jennifer's sister. The police, they couldn't enter the apartment without a search warrant, so they left. Sharon then noticed there was a chip in the glass, and she was able to unlock the window through this chip. This is when Jennifer's boyfriend, Jim, he entered the apartment to then find the gruesome remains of Jennifer's body in the bathtub. Jennifer had been shot in the arm, the bullet then travelling through her right arm, up into her lung and then punctured her rota and killed her instantly. Her body was mutilated and stabbed after she had passed. Her head and hands were found in bags beside the bathtub. She was found to have been shot a second time after she was dead. This one went into her neck and up into her skull. There were shocking 29 post-mortem stab wounds found on the face and chest and hands of Jennifer. 
They called the police immediately, which then ensued a four-day manhunt for Colton. For that many stab wounds after Jennifer was dead was absolutely horrific, and then for her family to find her this way was horrible, unspeakable. On the 23rd of August, Colton was captured in Mexico and handed over to the US Marshals at the border crossing. He was with a girl he had met and had a fling with in 2005. Her name is Laura Hall. She was described to be infatuated with Colton, but Colton he didn't feel the same way about her. I know I know I was surprised too. Upon Colton's arrest and following trial, Colton said he didn't remember anything the night of the murder. He said he was on Xanax and strong alcohol since 5pm that day. He initially pleaded not guilty but from the evidence put together, the events of that night became clear. He's not a cold hearted murderer. He's not. He's... <laughs> Nora Sullivan, who was, she was a friend of Colton's and she lived in the same apartment complex as him. She said she saw Colton on the morning of the 17th at about 3am. Colton called over to her house for about 15 to 30 minutes and Colton asked could he borrow her phone because he had lost his. Now, now Nora had said that she, she spotted blood on Colton's arm and Colton had responded and said that he, he was in a fight at his apartment with Mexicans and he was in a gunfight with them. But obviously Nora, she didn't believe this and she could see he was highly intoxicated and he was lying. Following this, Carlton, he had called Laura Hall. He had called her three times starting from 5.59am. Four the calls were made at 6.57 and 7am. Laura Hall, she then went over to Carlton's apartment. In an interrogation, Laura explained what exactly she saw when she went to Carlton's apartment that time. Laura Ashley Hall, you are under arrest. Oh my God, okay. what's going to happen? You're going to go to jail. What did I... Um, you got to tell the truth. Okay, now we're back at the apartment. Yeah. All right, and this is somewhere around 8 o'clock. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, Colton let you in. I sat down. I saw the purse. I saw shoes. I saw shorts. And I was just like, what is this? Like, you invited me, like, over, and there's some other girl here. What, what is going on? And he had the bathroom door closed, and I was just, like, in the bathroom, like, waiting for me. Like, what, what is going on? And I, I, I was like, who, who is, who is this? And he goes, shh. He got up, you know, it's a body. No, there's not. No, there's not. You know. You don't believe me? Come and see. Okay, sure. Let's see the body in your bathtub. You know. Yeah, right. Open the shower curtain. There's a body in the bathtub. Put the machete on top of it. I got the f*** out of the bathroom, I was just, but, I mean, I, two goals, <clears throat> one, get out of this bathroom, two, don't let Colton think you're going to call the police. Did he say what he planned to do with that body? He said he was going to cut up the body. Listen. Cut up the body and get rid of it. Did you see at any point him doing anything to further that no. exercise? No. No. God, no. Okay. Did you see any evidence of any preparation for that? God, no. Okay. Okay. After he told you what he had planned to do with the body. Yeah. Did he ask you to help him? No. From there they left Mexico on Laura's car where they had gone to Casablanca Hotel and they became friendly with a manager. His name was Pedro Fernandez. Pedro then invited them back to his house to watch a pay-per-view fight on his teddy. He then took a photo of Colton and Laura as he suspected him to be a fugitive. He was then caught by Mexican police. 
who then handed him over to the US Marshals. Colton was found guilty of forced degree murder and sentenced to 55 years in prison, while Laura was convicted of tampering with evidence and hindering the ap- apprehension of Colton. She was sentenced to 10 years in prison. She was actually released on parole in March 15, 2018. I think she's loving her sisters. Mm-hmm. I think she's loving her brother and her family and her grandmother. I think she just misses us all. It's like we miss her. That's it for today's case. Thank you very much for watching and I do appreciate all the love. If you liked the video, please comment, like and subscribe. Let me know what cases I can do next week and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.